Every once in a while, you'll come across a tool that just changes the way you use Linux, or it alters your workflow in such a way that it just makes it better. And there are several tools that have done that for me. So what I thought I'd do today is take you through five tools that have just changed the way I use Linux, or at least have made it significantly easier to do certain things. So the first two on the list are very much related, so I'm going to cover them together. And the first one is called Crony. Now what Crony is, is a cron job task demon. I don't think they actually call it a demon, but whatever. The idea is it runs in the background and handles your cron jobs. And if you don't know what a cron job is, basically it is a task that can be set for a certain interval that will always run in the background at that interval. So say for example, you had a weather script that you wanted to run every hour on the hour and then it would you could then display that in say a bar or something you could do that or if you wanted to back up your hard drive your home partition to an external hard drive every night at midnight you could do that through a cron job and that's what crony does crony actually is the service that runs in the background to run your cron jobs now there are several different types of these things crony just happens to be the one that i use and it's really good it it's very reliable, very stable. I've never had any problems with it. So Crony is the tool that you would use to run those tasks. Now it is available in, I believe, every single repo out there that you can possibly imagine. It's been around for a long time, so you should be able to install it through your distro's package manager. And then if you're using systemd, you would just enable it using systemctl crony.service. Uh, to enable that and then start it you just have to reboot your computer or enable now if you know how to do that if you don't know how to do it there are several tutorials out there on how to use crony so uh, you should definitely look those up if you need help uh, but let's say you got that all set up and you want to go through and create some cron jobs the hardest part about cron jobs is that your cron, your cron job file or your cron tab is going to probably look like this and this is mine and the at daily at weekly things are self-explanatory those are things that will run daily or weekly but the ones here in between these ones with the stars are really weird right and my biggest problem with cron is that you have to come up with a syntax and you have to remember everything how these the positions in the syntax go together and i can never do it i'm not good at it at all and i just i i, I can't do it. it it's beyond my memory in order to remember how this stuff works so in order to fix that there is a tool which brings us to our second tool called Krongtab Guru. And basically what this does is it gives you that initial syntax. If we go back here, we'll see these this weird syntax here. Basically what this means is that at every 10th minute, run this task. Or at every 10th minute, run this command and then put it in this folder or file. Uh, that's what that means. But there are several different things you can do. So we just hit the random button here. Like this one here, at the 5th minute in August, do whatever you're going to do. Or in this case, at 14.15 14, 15 on the day of the month 1. So this would be the, the G January. And you can see how this can get really complicated really fast. So at, the, at 22 on every day of the week from Monday through Friday. Now, one thing I will say about Crontab Guru is that it doesn't do a very good job of making the examples here user-readable. So every day of week instead of every day of the week, you know. But you can kind of get the idea. And the best part about it is that you can go through and you play around with what these things mean. So if we just start out with zero and then do this. So this means at every minute. So and then you can just go through and play with the numbers. So that so this would be every minute on the sixth day of the month. And then you can do different combinations. So this would be the one. So this would be at minute one on the sixth day of the month. So if, say you wanted to go through and do something on the sixth day of the month, every single month, you could do that. Uh, you could also go through and change this to five and do, that'd be five. And then this would be the month and this would be 12. We could do one through 12. So if you wanted to do something, the idea is you go through and play with it. And not only do you learn more about what this stuff means, but also, if you want to, just go through and uh, have it done for you, you can. There are several examples here. If you wanted to do some something like every Sunday, that's what that would look like. Or if you wanted to do uh, once a week, that's what that would look like. If you wanted to do uh, every month, that's what that would look like. And so on and so forth. So if you click on the examples link down here at the bottom, there's a ton of different examples that you can use. So every f four minutes would look like this. 
every hour would look like this. So that way, if you're like me and you can't remember what cron looks like, these, this cron syntax looks like, just comes here, it'll do it for you. So that is cron tab guru. The next one on the list is a favorite of mine, and that is Rofi. Rofi is fantastic. Now, everybody knows, I think, probably what Rofi is, but Rofi is a D-menu replacement, a D-menu alternative. It's a menu system that allows you to go through and launch applications and do so much more. So this is my application launcher, and you can just, I mean, just like you normally do, you could launch uh, Chromium like this or virtual box like that and you just type in the thing that you want to launch and it would launch it now it does other things as well so if i open that back up and hit control tab uh, it will allow me to go through and do uh, ssh into certain places if i had a whole bunch of sshs it will allow me to just run regular run prompts and stuff like that this will allow me to go through and do scripts and it also will show you all of my uh, open windows so it does that as well now just that alone pretty cool but also there's a ton of stuff that has been extended into Rofi to do awesome things so for example this is Rofi emoji and it will allow me to go through and select all the emojis that I want so let's just say person yeah, there's so there's babies childs boys and stuff like that that's so that's that's emojis another one is you can go through and write scripts so for example I, I have a uh, I commandeered district tube search scripts so I could do this and that will allow me to search Google like this, and then search for the Linux cast, and then it would actually go through and open up in my uh, a browser if I had that script set up to open up in the right browser, but you get the idea. So you can write a whole bunch of different scripts. So I have one for my bookmarks. So I could go through and open up, say, uh, YouTube, and it would open up YouTube in the browser. You get the idea. So that is Rofi. There's just a ton of stuff that you can do with it, including the next one. So the next one is also a Rofi slash D menu thing. And um, I, I wanted to do it separately because it is so cool. So there are a ton of different clipboard managers out there. Some of them GUI, some of them are built into your like browser or whatever. My favorite is called Clip Menu D. Now, Clip Menu D will go through and save all of the stuff in your clipboard as you go. So it allows you to go through and do a have like a history of all of your copied information so and then you can assign that to Rofi or D menu and then you just hit a key binding and your history of your clipboard comes up and you can go through and select whatever hit enter and then whatever you hit entered on would now be the active thing in the clipboard I can't tell you how many times I go I need to go through and copy stuff and uh, then I lose it and then I'd normally have to go back and recopy that stuff but with clip menu D, I go through, can go through and just go back into the history, reselect it, and it's in the, it's then in the right buffer, and I can paste it wherever I need to paste it. Clip menu D is awesome. Now I will say this: if you use a password manager and you copy your passwords into your clipboard, chances are clip menu D is going to remember it. So just be very careful that if, you, especially if you do something like stream or record videos, that you don't accidentally show a password when you use clip menu D. Because uh, it does remember everything. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a way to turn that functionality off. I think some password managers will take the password out of memory after a while. Uh, for whatever reason, Bitwarden doesn't seem to do that. Or maybe I just haven't figured that out yet. So that is Clip Menu. Uh, and it's really cool. So the last one on the list is one that just truly helps me every single day. And that is Pulse Mixer. Now, Pulse Mixer is a terminal-based application that allows you to go through and change the volumes for sources, whether it's input or output for audio. So if we go back to F1 here, these are my output sources, F2 input sources, and so on and so forth. And then you can navigate using Vim keys and change the uh, volume using the also the Vim keys. So if I go up and down you know, with the Vim keys, so H and L to go up and down, or in this case, I, I guess it's really supposed to be left and right, but for me, uh, up and down, whatever. Uh, but the idea is you can change the volume of certain sources. You can also go through, if you hit enter, and change defaults. Now, I'm not going to mess with anything right now because I'm recording, but the idea is if you go through and need to change the default source. So, for example, you want to change between your headphones and your speakers, and you want to do that, you can just go to output and change from these right now in my headphones to the speakers, which would be this one here. 
And that's just as easy as hit, hitting enter and then hit set as default. And you can change those back and forth. Now, it's the reason why I like it is because it's much simpler, at least I feel, than something like PA view control, which tends to be bogged down with just a ton of different stuff. And it's kind of hard to understand. This is very simple. Input, output, change default sources, and change volume. That's what it does. And it's really good. And I can't, we all know that audio sucks on Linux. It just does. Or, or I should say, when it's not working, it sucks. When it works fine, it's great. When it's when things do funky things, it sucks. A lot of times, I have it. I after a reboot, I come back in, and for whatever pul reason, Pulse Audio has changed my default input. So it's changed it from the microphone here to the webcam audio. And everybody knows webcam audio is terrible. So especially when you compare it to a, you know an actual microphone. So I have to go into Pulse Mixer and change that, and Pulse Mixer just makes it so easy to do so, and uh, I, I, it's one of those tools that I just couldn't live without. So those are the tools that I found that have just kind of changed the way I use Linux. Now, specifically, like, for Krona, you guys saw my Cron tab, and, and a lot of the stuff that I use there is superfluous. Like, most of that stuff was just putting stuff in my bar. Not a big deal. But I have a really hard time remembering to back up my like my, my home directory. Like if if it was up to me, I'd never remember to do it. Like sometimes I would remember like right before an update or whatever, but sometimes or most of the time not. So uh, backing up is a big problem for me. So with the cron crony and cron tab and stuff, I can go through and set that up so it, it backs up every night at midnight and it goes to my external hard drive and that way I just don't have to worry about it. That's just one of those things that's really good. Rofi, I use that 300 times a day. I open up that thing to open up every application. I use it to switch between windows. Uh, especially, everybody knows I use a ton of workspaces. With that window switcher, I can go through and find what windows are open and where they're open and switch to them really easily. Uh, and it's nice because like something like, D, like DWM doesn't have like a traditional task switcher. You can cycle through windows and stuff like that but there's no traditional task switcher so uh, using Rofi for that purpose is really cool. Uh, Pulse Mixer I already explained is it, just one of those things where it just makes Pulse Audio better because it, it it solves some of the funky things that Pulse Audio seems to do. So those are my tools that are just you know kind of life-changing. So in the comment section below I'd love to hear if you have any tools that you've found over the years that have just kind of changed the way you use Linux. You can also, if you have experience with some of the tools that I mentioned today, leave, leave those comments below as well. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gentoo, Sun2, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jack Snipe, Tool, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Carbonated, Mitch, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, The BSD's Rock, Peter Ake, and Crucible. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.